Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who reside as aliens scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, that you may obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood. May grace and peace be yours in fullest measure. In fullest measure. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope, a, 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 um, who has caused to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled, and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are protected by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, that the, proof, that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor of the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy and expressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. As to the salvation, the prophecy prophesied of the grace that will come to you, made careful search and inquiry, seeking to know a person or a time the Spirit of Christ within them was indicating as he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow. It was glories to follow. It was revealed to them that, it, that they were not serving themselves but you, and these things which now have been announced to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Therefore, gird your minds for action, keep sober in spirit, fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. Because it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you address as Father, the one who impartially judges according to each man's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay upon earth, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your feudal way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb and blemish and spotless, the blood of Christ. For he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but has appeared in these last times for the sake of you who through him are believers in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. If, since you have in obedience to the truth purified your souls for a sincere for a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart, for you have been born again. Not a seed which is perishable, but imperishable, that is, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord abides forever. And this is the word which is preached to you. Therefore, putting aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, like newborn babes, long for the pure milk of the word, that by you may grow in respect and salvation if you have tasted the kinds of the Lord. And coming to him as to a living stone, rejected by man, but choice and precious in the sight of God, you also as living stones are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For this is contained in Scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone, and he who believes in him shall not be disappointed. This precious value then is for you who believe, but for those who disbelieve, the stone which the builders rejected, this became the very cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. For they stumbled because they are disobedient to the word and to the tomb. They were also, they were also appointed, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own, possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light for you once were not a people but now you are the people of god you had not received mercy but now you have received mercy beloved i urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lusts which wage war against the soul keep your behavior excellent among the gentiles so that in the thing in which they slander you as evil doers as evil doers they may on account of your good deeds as they observe them glorify god in the day of visitation Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether to a king as the one in authority, as the one in authority, or, or to governors as sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and the praise of those who do right. For such is the will of God that by doing right you may silence him as a foolish man. Act as free men and do not use your freedom as a cover for evil, but use it as bonds to God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all respect, not only to those who are good in general, but also those who are unreasonable. For this finds favor, if for the sake of conscience toward God, a man bears up under sorrows when suffering unjustly. But for what credit is there if when you sin and are harshly treated, you endure it with patience? But if when you do what is right and suffer for it, you patiently endure it, this finds favor with God. For you have been called for this purpose, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving an example for you to follow in his steps, who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth, and while being reviled, he did not revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously, and he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds you were healed, for you were continually straying like sheep. 
but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. In the same way, you wives be submissive to your own husbands, so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be they may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives, as they observe your chaste and respectful behavior. And let not your adornment be merely external, braiding the hair and wearing gold jewelry or putting on dresses, but let it be the hidden prison. But let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a general quiet spirit. For in this way, in former times, the holy women also, who hoped in God, used to adorn themselves, being submissive to their own husbands. Thus Sarah, obeyed Hebrew, thus Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. You have become her children if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear. You husbands, likewise, live with your wives in an understanding way, as with a weaker vessel, since she is a woman, and grant her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. To sum up, let all be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind hearted, and humble in spirit, not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. For you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. For let him who means to love life and see good days refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile, and let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears attend to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And who is there to harm you if you presale for what is good? But even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. And do not fear their intimidation. Do not be troubled, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you, to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. And keep a good conscience, so that in the thing in which you are slain, that those who are about your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better if God should will us so that you suffer for doing what is right rather than for doing what is wrong. For Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, in order that he might bring us to God, hadn't been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made proclamation to the spirit now in prison, who once were disobedient. When the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah during the construction of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons were brought safely through the water, and corresponding to that, baptism now saves you, not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of God, having gone into heaven after angels and authorities and powers have been subjected to him. Therefore, since Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same purpose, because he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so as to live the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for the lusts of man, but for the will of God. For the time already passed is sufficient for you, to have carried out the desire of the Gentiles, having pursued a course of sensuality, lusts, drunkenness, carousals, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. And in all this, they are surprised that you do not run with them into the same excess of dissipation, and they malign you. But they shall give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For the gospel has for this purpose been preached, even to those who are dead, that though they are judged in the flesh as men, they may live in the spirit according to the will of God. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaint, as each one has received a special gift employed in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Whoever speaks, let him speak as it were the utterances of God. Whoever serves, let him do so as by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fire or deal among you, which comes upon you for your testing, as though some strange thing were happening to you. But to the degree that you share the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that also keep on rejoicing, so that also the revelation of his glory, you may rejoice with exultation. If you were reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. By no means that any of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or evildoer, or a troublesome meddler. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not feel ashamed, but in that name let him glorify God. For it is time for judgment to begin with the household of God. If it begins with us first, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is with difficulty that the righteous is saved, what will become of the godless man and the sinner? Therefore, let those also who suffer according to the will of God and trust our souls to a faithful creator in doing what is right. Therefore, I exhort the elders among you as your fellow elder, witness of the sufferings of Christ, and a partaker also of and a partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntar but voluntarily, according to the will of God, and not and not free and not for sordid and not for sordid gain, but with ignorance but with eagerness, nor yet is lording it over those lot of to your charge, but proving to be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, 
you will receive the unfading crown of glory. You younger men likewise, be subject to your elders, and all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, for God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore unto the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety upon him, because he cares for you. Be of, be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, but resist him, firming your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. Through Sophanus, our faithful brother, for so I regard him, I written to you briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God. Stand firm in it. She who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you greetings, and so does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace be to you all who are in Christ. That's what I'm talking about. There is nothing, nothing like memorizing the Bible. There's nothing like memorizing or citing scripture. You know, I thought um, last week I was, um, sometimes when the weather's nice, I'll actually walk to the grocery store. Not if I'm going to buy like a watermelon or something, but, you know, I'll go there if it's something... Um, not too heavy, not too bulky. And I'll just walk there instead of driving and uh, get the exercise, enjoy the weather. And um, last week there was some sale on uh, uh, melons, cantaloupe, smaller melons, but you know, I couldn't help myself. It was a good deal. So I bought, uh, I think, four or six of them. And <laughs> Halfway through my walk back was like, I really should stick to my rule of any melons of any kind, any amount, any size, take the car. But, you know, it was really interesting. It was, I found myself at that very time was a little bit of a challenge. Midway through, I was kind of dragging a little bit, carrying all those heavy cantaloupe melons and um, probably a mile or two away. So it was not a short walk, not like it was just, just down the block. And, you know, it's really interesting. I found myself, um, I started reciting, um, actually it was this book of Hebrews, the first few chapters, and it was incredible. It was as though, um, you know what it was like? I'll tell you exactly what it was like. It was like uh, when I was a kid, I used to um, watch cartoons. Popeye was one of my favorite. And, you know, it hit me the other day when that happened with carrying those melons halfway in my walk and I'm just like dragging and I started memorizing Hebrews and it was incredible. It was just like, you know how Popeye would uh, pop out that can of spinach and squeeze it and the spinach would fly up in the air and then, um, and then fall in his mouth. He would chew it up and swallow it and muscles would grow and he was, you know, strong and he, you know, beat brutus or whatever his task was that he was trying to accomplish. It was like super power, you know, and, uh, you know, it's incredible. Memorizing the Bible has that is the same effect on me. I believe it has the same effect on anyone who will do it, but I know for, a, I can tell you a hundred percent, it has that effect on me. And I started reciting the first few chapters of Hebrews. And before I knew it, I wasn't even thinking about the weight of all those <laughs> melons and the other groceries I bought, all those bags. And, uh, that second half of the journey, about a mile, I think, was like, I did. it just went by in like two seconds. I didn't think about how heavy it was. I didn't think about how I was dragging. It was really like that Popeye and his spinach. It was incredible. And that kind of got me thinking. That's a great way to tell people about the one of the infinite benefits of Scripture. A lot of them are physical, not just spiritual. Absolutely that. Not just emotional, absolutely that, not just relational, absolutely that, but even, it even extends the power of the word, even in the effect of the word, even extends to the physical realm. It really is amazing. And that's just kind of a silly example, I guess, but it's a real life one that happened to me. It's a recent one. So I'm going with it. And, but it was a great example for anyone who hasn't memorized the Bible memorized and recited scripture. It is, there are so many benefits. You just don't know what you're missing. I'm telling you, if you are a believer and you've always thought, you know, hey, something is missing in the Christian life, 
you're right. For years, I was always uh, going to church and hearing great messages and great speakers, some of the best in the country, and I just was so blessed by that and to be in that position. But there was always, there was something missing. There had to be something more. And I felt it. I think almost everyone I've ever known feels that. So many people have told me that. And there is. It feels like that because there is. You're right. We're all right. There is something missing. And I have found what that is. And that is regularly and consistently memorizing and reciting Scripture in a Bible memory in a, on a regular, systematic basis. It, there is no sub. It's like that uh, commercial tagline. There is no substitute, and um, that really is true. And that's true. It is amazing. You know, in First Timothy four and verse six, it talks about um, uh, First Timothy four eight. I love that verse. For bodily discipline, as good as that is, for bodily discipline is only of little value, but Godliness is profitable for all things, since it holds promise for the present life and also the life to come and the life to come. So it says it right there so clearly. The present life, this physical, finite, present life in which we find ourselves living right now, it is there. It is profitable for all things, including in this life. If that isn't enough for you, I love... Uh, Later in, in the book of uh, 1 Timothy, in chapter 6, verse 6, it says, But godliness actually is, a, is profitable, is, is, but godliness actually is a means of great gain. Godliness is actually is a means of great gain. And um, it holds promise for the present life, but also for the come. I love the fact that it is a means of great gain. And um, one of my favorite verses, too, which is just says it probably as succinctly and goes as far as any of them, is Proverbs 4.22. You know, a lot of people, one of my favorite verses since I was a kid, this is one of the verses, I used to memorize verses kind of just randomly, separately, on their own, you know, a verse here, a verse there, I'd flip around different books and so forth. And that is fantastic. There's that, listen, that's a great thing. But there's a whole different level when you do it on a systematic book by book, verse by verse, book by book basis. Because it actually... Um, gives you a great, incredible, incomparable under, sense of understanding of that book, of the author, of what the author, human author is trying to say, what the um, ultimate author, the Holy Spirit, the heavenly author is trying to say through that human vessel. And um, it really is just something that will revolutionize your life thousand percent guaranteed I promise you if you hear anything and I know that there I hear promises all the time and I were I believe almost none of them especially like on TV or on the radio or in the media or you know just different people talking and stuff and I'll tell you it is very hard to believe anything these days uh, it's probably always been a little bit like that but I don't think anything to this extent but there is something that you can believe a thousand percent that is to say infinitely you can have infinite confidence in I'm telling you firsthand you can that is true and that is the Bible it is flawless it is without error it is infinite it is eternal it is living and abiding it is living and active and it does its work it works its work in those who believe. Our only thing is having faith, and even that is a gift of God, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. But if God, he gives, thankfully, he gives that gift freely, and if we just appropriate that gift, if we just receive that gift from him and have faith, the word in 1 Thessalonians 2, 13 says that the word will work its work. It will work its work. Isaiah it will not return void. I like that how in the New Testament, Anything it says is infinitely the word of God and infinitely true and infinitely powerful. But I, there's a certain different level or sense I love when the New Testament quotes the Old Testament. I just love that. It brings them both together. You've got God saying it in the Old Testament. You've got God saying it in the New Testament. And uh, once is enough, but <laughs> how much better is twice, right? Or multiple times. So I love that. Or even when things are repeated multiple times in the New Testament, I love that too. But anyway, once is enough, but uh, the more the better, the more the, more the merrier. So, truer words never spoken. So, um, but at any rate, it has 
it extends even to the physical realm, which I think a lot of even Christians, even mature believers who have known the Lord for years, don't quite understand the extent to which that is true. Great verse, you know, one of my favorite growing up um, was, uh, has been and was and still is Proverbs 4.23. Um, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. There is no greater way to do that, as an aside, there is no greater way to do that, in my opinion, and I think period, than memorizing and reciting scripture. Bible memory is the way to fully obey and apply and get the benefits and reward rewards of that verse, Proverbs 4.23, but I bring that up, that was a side note. My main point is Proverbs 4.22, not nearly so well known as the next verse, but Proverbs 4, Proverbs 4.22, great, great, great verse. It says, speaking of referring to them, referring to the my words of Proverbs 4 verse 20, just a few, two verses before it, referring back to the my words, which, which is the Bible, those for they, those words, his word, the Bible, they are life, his words are life to those who find them. Pretty good, pretty strong. But it goes further than that. It says, and health to all their whole body. Not just mind, not just heart, not just emotions, body. And it doesn't just say to their body, it says, it says to all their whole body. Look at that beautiful redundancy there. It's not just the body, it's all totality, the whole double totality body. I just love that. And so anyone who thinks that the word doesn't, the work of the word and the benefit of the word and the effect of the word doesn't extend to the physical realm, only needs to look at at, at 1 Timothy 6, 6 is great, 1 Timothy 4, 8 is great, but Proverbs 4, 22, you can't, God couldn't make it any clearer if he showed up right now and, came, and, 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 and poked his head through the clouds from heaven and said to the whole world, uh, uh, said, uh, uh, you know, hey, the Bible, my words extend their benefit and their work and their power and their efficacy extend, extend to the physical realm. Couldn't be any clearer than he did in Proverbs 4.22. So these are some of the things that, that uh, the website is BibleMemory.org, BibleMemory.org, BibleMemory.org. That is uh, the website for this um, historic uh, task I'm undertaking. The Lord laid it on my heart for a long time. I've loved the word. I've loved memorizing the Bible, different verses, like I said earlier. But, you know, I came across, uh, this was uh, not too long ago, for years, for years I've been thinking of a way, you know, I see how good the Lord is to us as a human race. I see how good he is to us, especially his children. I see how good he's been to me personally and all that he means to me. And I've always, just in the back of my mind, kind of, front and back, but always at least in the back, sometimes in the front, but at least in the back, what can I do to express, adequately express my gratitude for him, my love for him, kind of a thank you gift, a love gift that I can give back to him. You know, we can't give anything to him, but we can only give back. Romans makes that clear. Anything that we have, is it would just be giving back to him. Who can give to God? We can't. We can just give back, but that's important. That's all we can do, but we, we should be doing that, and that's something that in my own heart I just really wanted to do, and I could never think of something giving to him, you know, each week or each month, absolutely, that's a fantastic thing and been a great, great blessing, um, giving him not just my money, but my time, my talents, my putting him first, keeping him first in all my relationships, all of those things in my life, all those things are, are um, you know, great ways to give back to him, but I just kind of like, <laughs> here's something more, or something else. And, you know, it hit me not too long ago. It hit me, something I knew he would love more than anything else I could ever have ever thought of. And that would be if someone were to memorize the entire Bible, every word that he's communicated to us, to memorize every single one of those words, and then recite them, his own words, back to him. I can't think of anything better than that. 
you know on the website I actually have this there on the home page but it really is true you know it's like if you just think to uh, 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 a woman or man you've dated someone you really really you were dating them and let's just say you wrote them you really love them you wrote them this great love letter in this case it would be a very 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 long <laughs> love letter but let's just say you wrote them a great love letter and uh, you gave it to them and and um, you know in your back of your mind you're kind of thinking boy I wonder how this person's gonna react and what what they're gonna think of it and so forth and um, you know let's just say that a week or two you know you, you go on the next your next date together and uh, let's just say that you order dinner you wait for the food to come and and uh, he or she starts quoting back to you your love letter word for word every word of that love letter that you wrote to that person they quote it back to you they quote your own words your own love letter back to you how would that make you feel well, i'll tell you i'll tell you me personally to each his own to me personally there's nothing that would move me i'm gonna start to cry a second ago there's nothing that would move me more than that for something that i poured my heart into writing this love letter to let someone know how much i care about them and then that person responds by quoting <laughs> quoting it back to me quoting those words back to me and so i'm a such a sinner i'm a finite human being i'm the biggest sinner i know i'm the biggest sinner i've ever known i'm the biggest sinner you've probably ever known would surprise me a bit so i'm saying this understanding that if someone like me a sinner can would feel kind of that way how much more would the God of all creation, the God of all righteousness and purity and perfection and power, how would that make him feel? I don't know. I think pretty good. <laughs> and when you think about, when you add that, I think he's also greatly pleased when people, when we share the gospel and people come to know him, put their faith in him. I think he's pleased when we worship him. There's no question these things are too, but those things are informed by Bible memory, meaning you cannot worship him as well without memorizing the Bible, having that in your mind, in your body, in yourself. You can't do that so well as if you do have that Bible dwelling in you. There's no question about that. The word within activates the Holy Spirit within to a whole different level. It's, it's uh, you know, if you ever noticed Colossians 3, 16, 17, it talks about, you see the the uh, uh, look at the results of the word richly dwelling in you, not just dwelling in you, richly dwelling in you. To me, that goes to Bible memory because you cannot, no one can meditate on the word better than the one who has memorized the word. I'm at a stop traffic light, a stoplight, and I can recite scripture and start meditating on that. I'm, I'm anywhere I am, it doesn't matter where I am or what I'm doing or what's happening around me, if you memorize the Bible, you can meditate on, on it at any given time. Tremendous power there. But at any rate, um, going back, that just hit me as being the best thing that I could do, the best gift I could ever give them. And so it was at that second that that all kind of hit me that, um, that I dedicated the rest of my life to memorizing the entire Bible. And once completed, to recite that back to him. It's a very, <laughs> it's 66 books in one. The book of Hebrews is one of the longer, on the longer side for the New Testament. But man, compared to some of the Old Testament books, that's nothing. That was baby steps that I just did. That was baby stuff. That was like cakewalk compared to some of those Old Testament, I mean, Psalms. I didn't want to think about that. But, but the whole, the great thing is that, um, you know, that's going to take a long time. But that's what I've dedicated the rest of my life to. And then to... Um, you know, it's amazing. That is a daunting task, no question about it. But one thing that I've, that's amazing I've seen is the more of the Bible I memorize, the more I'm able to memorize, the more of the Bible that I pour into me, into my mind, the greater capacity there is to add even more. It's incredible. You know, I uh, said, and I think it was af after the um, video for the book of James, the first book, um, you know, how you pour, it's not like that in the human realm. This is different. Um, you pour water into a glass and 
you know, the more you pour in, the less capacity, the less room there is to pour even more water in. Well, the mind in the Bible, the human mind in the Bible are totally, um, that's not the case. In fact, it's not just the human mind, it's the Bible. You know why? Because if you memorize, I mean, I've memorized, you know, the preamble to the Constitution, and as we all probably have in, in, in elementary or middle school, and, um, you know, just things, we've uh, plays for school or just whatever, you memorize different things. And the more you memorize of non-biblical things, let's say some other than the Bible, it is, you know, I have to say, it, <laughs> I don't know how much more room there would have been to, to memorize the entire constitution, for example. I mean, the more, even if you memorize that, there's less room. But the Bible's different. The more you put in, the more it expands your capacity, not only to fit more of the Bible in, but more of everything else. The Constitution, the preamble, now I can memorize pretty much anything I want to because I have the, I'm putting more and more of the Bible in my mind. It expands that capacity both for more of the Word and more of the things. And the more of the Word I put in and I apply that aspect of it, the more capacity, again, it's exponential, it's incredible. And uh, so I have no doubt that I am absolutely going to memorize the entire Bible, every word, Genesis to Revelation. And I am so confident about that because it was really hard for me to memorize. I don't have a photographic memory. I don't know that such exists. I've never seen proof of that or firsthand experience. I think maybe some people could read something and then, you know, repeat it. I think it would be not very big volume and I think it would be very short term. I don't think they could do that, read it and then come back in a week or a month and and recite it. Um, I've never seen proof of that. I don't think that exists. If it does, man, I'm jealous. <laughs> I would love that, but to make this thing a whole lot easier. It, although reading through the Bible, entire Bible is not, you know, something that is not like that's an easy task, just reading it, much less memorizing, much less reciting. So anyway, a couple of different layers and levels there. But at any point, at any rate, you know, I don't have a photographic memory if such even exists. And so the book of James was really hard. That first book I memorized, really, really hard. But like I said in that video, after that video, you know, it was once I got to chapter five, verse one, it was so much, I was confident. It wasn't nearly so daunting a task as when I started at chapter one, verse one, when I first started the, at the beginning of the book. So um, that has continued with Hebrews um, and with uh, First Peter. You know, the more I memorize, the more I'm able to memorize, the more room there is to fit even more, not just more of the Bible, which is my main focus, but even tangentially, secondarily, more of everything. So a lot of exciting things. As I go through this journey, I'm going to document everything on at that website, biblememory.org, biblememory.org. And um, you're, I'm going to put all the videos. This will be the next one. I'll put them all eventually, Lord willing, if he gives me breath, I will eventually have all 66 of the books up there. And then I'm going to do the entire, probably entire like section, several books at a time. But eventually I'll do the entire Bible. Um, just the sheer um, size of it. I don't think it's something... It would be very difficult, I think, to memorize the entire Bible without sleeping in between, you know. So maybe you have to break it up into parts. I don't know. Maybe maybe by then, that'll be the greatest demonstration of the Word's power and memorizing the power of memorizing the Bible of all is if I can memorize and re if I can rather recite the whole thing in one at one time, um, that would be, uh, I guess, even memorizing would be superhuman but that would be supernatural to be able to recite it without falling asleep. You know, <laughs> I don't know how long, I've even thought about how long that would take. It took me about a half hour to do 13 chapters in Hebrew. So I guess I could do the math and it probably would take a week or two, or I don't know what it would take doing it nonstop. Um, you could see that even 13 chapters is starts to challenge the voice a little bit. So maybe I have a, a take, you know, bottle of water, several bottles, <laughs> bottles of water that I could, take during the time. Maybe that would get me through and I wouldn't need the sleep. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll see. But either way, it's, you know, it's not like it's not, it doesn't have to be in one sitting. It could be, you know, several books in one day and then several books to sleep, several books the next day, go to sleep, several books the next day. We could do it, make it a week event or something. I don't know. But I do think it is going to be historic. No question about that. I can't find a single um, uh, person in human history that has verifiably memorized and recited the entire Bible. So it would be historic on that level. I think that just 
It's something that I think will get the world's attention just from a human, on the human level, on an intellectual level, for anyone to be able to memorize the entire Bible, something that long, and recite that. So it's not just like memorize a chapter, forget it, memorize a book, forget it, move on to the next. I mean we're memorizing and retaining, remembering every single chap verse and chapter and book of the 66 that I've memorized. So that's a whole different thing. There's no question that's going to get a lot of attention, even from the media and from the world at large. Um, so if you want to um, be involved and really be a part of literally of history and you want to support me in this effort, you can go to that same website, um, www.biblememory.org, www.biblememory.org, not .com. Nothing against .coms or anything, but a lot of people just act, you know, <laughs> I find myself a lot of times just accidentally, you know, by habit going to .com because most domains are .com, but uh, ministry domains um, are .org almost all the time. And so I, I um, that's, a, that's an amazing story how the Lord worked all that out to get that domain. Um, that's a, another story for another day, but just amazing how the Lord was in it from the very beginning in, in letting me be able to use that domain for this ministry and for this project. And uh, so that's incredible. But anyway, anyway, it's www.biblememory.org. And on that website, you can track my progress each step of the way. Every time I memorize a new book, I'll recite it on video like you just saw with Hebrews. And I will, um, you know, it reminds me like I know in chapter, uh, uh, you know, at uh, Thou Art My Son, I left out a phrase and, and I said, and but of the angels instead of and of the angels there in chapter one. And, and uh, uh, so there are little things like that that I might redo it. But it's not to me about getting every single, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. But when I do recite it at the very end, I do want it to be 100% perfect. And um, in the meantime, just to show my progress, I don't mind it if there's and instead of uh, but instead of and or forever instead of perpetually. I did that just now in this video. And, um, you know, I leave out the phrase, thou art my son. That's a very big phrase to leave out. I'm a little disappointed. I'm very disappointed in myself about that. But, you know, for the purposes of these videos, that's something that I don't mind at all. If there's a little misword here, a different word there, sometimes it's different versions. I've heard over the years, one uses forever, one uses perpetually. And so that can be the case. I will note that I um, started memorizing verses, I said, when I was a kid, just randomly kind of skip around the entire Bible and Awana is, is uh, I was in Awana and that was has such a great ministry. And, um, you know, they, their curriculum is they have you memorize verses that are all over the place. And so I like this much, much better doing it verse by verse, book by book basis. Um, but that is fantastic too, especially, hey, anything when it comes to Bible memory is fantastic, especially for kids. And I say especially because they have presumably a lot more of their life to go and their minds are so much more pliable and malleable and still forming that I think there is a certain um, extra sense of urgency and heightened urgency to get kids memorizing the Bible. Um, so there certainly will be a whole area of this website down the road that focuses on that and that makes it super fun, believe it or not, and super easy, believe it or not. Those two kind of go hand in hand in this case to memorize Bible that we're gonna, I'm gonna roll out and I'll have that all like a full curriculum that your your kids can be memorizing entire books of the Bible. And you could be memorizing entire of the books of the Bible because like I say, it's never too early, but you know what? It's never too late either for to memorize, start memorizing the Bible. So I ho hope to do that, have that encourage both adults and kids alike, but kids, there's a certain timing, a time sensitivity or urgency because their minds are still forming and before they fully form, Boy, to get the Bible in their minds during this formative years to me is a whole, like a bonus. That's like a cherry on the Sunday. So hopefully um, we'll, we'll, but you can follow all of that at that website. And if you want to get behind that, to be part of this history, if you want to help out, you know, I have dedicated my entire, when I, that, I told you earlier when that thought hit me, I right then knew, okay, I'm going to quit my job <laughs> and I'm going to do this full time and dedicate the rest of my life to it. There's, I don't think I could do it in my lifetime if I'm doing it part-time like I've kind of started. So I uh, decided to go full-time and I'm, I've decided to dedicate to, to uh, spend, put my entire 
life savings toward that. I've already begun to spend that with the website and different costs that have come up to make this happen, not to mention all the time and all of that it takes to memorize. And then even the video, just now it's taken, you know, half hour, an hour. So um, all of that combined, that's something I'm going to do. Unfortunately, um, my life savings would last me on its own, maybe six or nine months, something like that. And so um, I, if the Lord wants this to really happen, to be a thing, there's no question it will if I have the time, if he grants the breath and I have the time where I can do it full time, there's no question this is going to happen. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to take, you know, take a long time to read the Bible. It's going to take a long time to memorize it and then recite it once I'm done memorizing the whole thing. But it's going to take a while. But if um, I am, if he wants it to happen, I am trusting him to send, and I know he will, enough like-minded Bible-loving believers who will donate and to this cause, to this project, and get behind this in the ministry that comes out of it. And there's some great verses. Uh, Third John 8 is one of my favorite in this regard. It says, therefore, we ought to support such men, speaking of ministry, that we may be fellow workers with the truth. And so anyone who to donate to this cause, this project that will allow me, if you don't, then it's not going to happen because I'd have to do it part time. And that's fine. If I go through my whole life savings, and I have to go back to work. I'm totally fine with that. I'll do it part time, maybe get through the whole New Testament by the time I die. <laughs> That'll be fine. That'll be in my mind, like half a gift, love gift and thank you gift back to him. Half of what I would want to do, but it would still be great. I'd still be thrilled. I'd still be very pleased and thankful and grateful, but I would love to do the whole thing. I'd love to recite every word that he has given to us back to him. I think that would have the most um, impact on him and effect on him and make him most pleased, be most pleasing to him. So that's what I'm looking to do, but it's only going to happen if he leads like-minded Bible-loving believers to get behind this and to support it, not just to donate to it, as important as that is, because if I can't eat and, and you know, don't have a roof over my head, then there's no way I can spend my time memorizing reciting scripture. I have to go get a job at least part of the time, and then I can do that the other half. So um, at any rate, um, that's where things stand there. But there are also ways, you know, if you're not able to donate financially, please don't. Please don't. If you're not comfortably able to, don't do that. There are other ways you can you can help out. You can share this video with all the people on your um, social, different social network platforms. And uh, you can tell your friends and family and, and, and co-workers and fellow congregation members and spread the word in that way. Um, you can... Um, Sign up to follow the website, BibleMemory.org, and um, you'll be automatically notified um, each time a new post is published or a new video is put up. So um, there are other ways that you can find them. There are four in total that I've come up with you could find um, on that website. And uh, you can, uh, uh, one of the most important by far is pray. You can be praying that this happens, that the Lord will bless this and the ministry that flows forth from it that it will bring many people to a saving knowledge of him. Nothing saves people like the word. If people, if, if I could just, if I, the Lord through me can convince people the world over to memorize, start memorizing the Bible, a ton of those, if not all of them, a ton of those will be saved. I am a thousand percent certain about that. No question about that. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. And Romans 10, 17. So there's no question when you look at the words, again, 1 Thessalonians 2, 13, the word will work its work in those who believe. And so getting, I am certain about that. And so um, so if you want to be a part of that, um, there are other ways to do that. I say uh, the four ways are pray, say, stay, and play. You can pray for me. You can pray for me that I stay true to the word, that I stay committed to this goal that the Lord has placed in my heart, this calling from him, that I uh, obey the word, not just memorize and recite it each day, but that I, I obey it and um, just remain faithful and pleasing to him. So pray, um, say is telling other people about it. Like I said, like your social network platforms and just word of mouth, tell as many people about it as you can and, um, and then encourage them to do likewise. Um, pray, say, um, stay, that's staying with me along the way, and uh, that is following that website, that blog there at BibleMemory.org. That's a way you can stay with me 
and um, you can message me on that website and so you can stay with me in that way and you can stay with me on your end just by following along and, and watching my progress and being able to pray for me and I'll have prayer requests I'm sure along the way that I can share with you that you can pray for so pray, say, stay and then play is the fourth one pray, say, stay, play and the play is it's great. Those three are like being in the bleachers and cheering this on, this effort on. And I think that that's fantastic. It's crucial without those three things and especially prayer, but also spreading the word and, and following me on the blog and watching, tracking my progress. Um, those things are fantastic. It's not going to happen without those. So that's a huge thing. But also necessary is the fourth one, which is play. And that is to come out from the bleachers, to come down on the field with me by actually donating financially to keep this thing going so I can continue to devote full time to it all day, every day, and not have to spend half my time, or I guess a third of my time working, a third of my time sleeping. Now I can spend two thirds pretty much doing this and then a third of it, you know, sleeping or whatever, or fourth, whatever it is. But at any rate, so that's something where a way that you can actually come on the field. They're both critically important. They're both necessary. If you're not able to come on the field and donate financially, please don't. The other three are plenty fine. Even one of the three is, would be just thrilled. I'd be thrilled with that, um, let alone all three. But if you're able to go actually come on the field with me and to get behind this and support this financially, one time is huge help. What would be most helpful is those who can who can do so, who can comfortably do so, who on a monthly basis, um, there's a little box on the PayPal page where you can check that box and it'll be a monthly, um, they'll do it month, every single month on your credit card and or debit card. That's a great, that would give me so much more visibility um, in, in not only uh, memorizing as I work through all the books of the Bible, but also um, the ministry that ministries, there are several I already have in mind that are going to flow from this. On that website, BibleMemory.org, I give the plan of action. It's already, and that's not a complete, but those are the ones I've come up so far that are kind of most ready to roll out. And so there are a lot of different ministries that will flow forth from this. And this will become, this history making uh, task will become a platform for several different ministries. And so It'll give me a lot more visibility as far as planning goes if you can make it a monthly gift. Um, but I say if you're able and if you're comfortably able, not just able, but comfortably able because, you know, sacrificial giving is a great thing in Scripture. It, it, it puts an emphasis on that as far as what's pleasing to the Lord. I would rather you reserve that, you know, sacrificial giving where you don't, you know, it cuts into your food budget uh, that month or um, other expenses you have. Um, you know, I'd rather you not... Um, you know, do that for this ministry. I'd appreciate it, but I don't want you to do that. I'd much rather you put that toward your, your food budget or your cable TV or to stay up with the news and stuff or just whatever your rent, whatever needs you have. If you aren't in a position where you can do that comfortably, then please don't give a penny. Don't give a dime. You can help out in those other ways and the Lord will bless that tremendously. And I will be so grateful for that. And it'll be such an honor if you would you would get involved in that way, support this effort in that way would be would be just a huge blessing. For those who are comfortably able, as much as the Lord loves sacrificial giving, I'd rather you reserve that for your church, not for this ministry. Um, but for those who are comfortably able to do that on a monthly basis and who it's not going to affect them, it's not going to, they can still eat to their heart's content that month and they can still you know, have their rent fully paid that month. So that's what I'm talking about. Think people who are comfortably able to do so, who want to also go that extra mile and get come on the field with me and stand shoulder to shoulder with me in as every step of the way as I seek to memorize the entire Bible. Um, then on that website, BibleMemory.org, you can do that. You can check that little box on the PayPal page and it will actually do that every month. That would give me so much better visibility for planning and for the different things ministries that that I believe the Lord wants to flow forth out of this this um, undertaking, this task, this initial phase of it, phase one as it were, step one. So at any rate, um, that's the website, biblememory.org. 
Um, thank you so much for watching the video. Um, one of the things I'm going to do on that website is not just um, videos of when I uh, uh, finish memorizing the book. Certainly we'll do that, put that on there, reciting it, just so you can kind of, I can remain ca accountable to you and show that progress, you know, going all the way to 66, all, every single book of the Bible. But um, so that, that's a great uh, way you can follow me, follow, track my progress on the blog, but also I'm going to be posting, doing um, written posts as well as video posts, publishing those on that website to where um, I'll memor I'll do recite um, a book. And you know, it's amazing when I'm reciting the Bible, it's amazing how thoughts will hit me, thoughts will come to me that I've never thought before in my life. And each time it's different. So what I'm going to do, Lord willing, is I'll do a video reciting, not the official recitation video, but, you know, just kind of informally reciting a book. And instead of just sticking to that book, as thoughts hit me, I'm going to share those with you right on the video. So it'll be kind of stream of consciousness, what I call stream of memory. And as I recite from memory, the Bible, thoughts hit me, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the word itself brings things to mind that I've never seen before. And they change my life. They're life-changing in nature. And so I'm going to share those with you. So I'll do videos like that too on that website, BibleMemory.org, BibleMemory.org. And also written posts. Sometimes I'll share my thoughts on any given day at any given minute with written posts um, that uh, I think you might find a blessing to. So for all those things, you can, you can do all of that at one location, um, www.biblememory.org, biblememory.org. And thanks again for watching the video, and I hope to see you on the website, and I hope you um, track my progress, keep me um, uh, keep me going, keep me, keep me going all the way to 66 book, keep me accountable, and most of all, uphold me in your prayers, because without that, none of this is going to happen, without your support and without the Lord's grace and granting this, making this a reality. Thanks so much again for watching. Hopefully I'll see you on the website, biblememory.org, biblememory.org. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your day. Lord bless.